everybody, I'm Dizzy the Lookout, and this is my life update and media recommendations vlog. Really, this vlog just exists so that I can tell you guys that I'm alive, I'm okay. Um, it's been two or three months since my last vlog, which, like, sorry. But there are still a handful of you who decided to subscribe based on my past videos. So I just want to take a time out of my life and say hello to all of you new faces. And I hope you enjoy what you see. So things have been happening in my life since my last one. Um, I ended my job at my last studio and I've started working in-house again for another production company. I'm not sure what I can say about the show itself, but I can say that the studio I'm working at right now is really awesome. It's really fun. Um, we have like barbecues and like people hang out and talk to each other, which is nice. And sometimes there are Nerf gun fights. Like it's it's weird. This is the like this how I imagined animation studios when I was a kid, and have yet to see in my career before this point. So. It's been pretty fun. Unfortunately, working in-house again and dealing with eight-hour regular long work days with commuting and stuff really takes a toll on my personal energy and really takes out of all the creative endeavors I was able to do when I was working from home. And for the last two-ish months, I've been working on preparing for my first ever convention, which was a couple weeks ago. But um, on this side of the convention, I can say that um, it, I was more or less a success. Um, I made back my table and my prints, which um, I didn't end up making back like all of my startup costs, but like I wasn't really planning on making those back anyway. But preparing for that took up pretty much all of my brain space and all of the leftover creative energy that I had. I do plan on doing a couple more tables in the new year, hopefully, depending on how applications go, and I'll keep you guys a little more informed about that. So if you live in the Ottawa Valley, uh, keep an eye out for that, and then maybe you can come say hi to me or whatever. Okay, so real talk. Fall, winter tends to be the hardest time of year for me. I think last year around this time, I took about three months break from video making before I started working from home. But generally in my life, I don't know if it's a coincidence or not, but usually this is around the time when things start to kind of like pile up and go wrong for me. This year, um, it turns out that the guy who was doing my taxes uh, misfiled one of my papers and I ended up owing the government like $2,000, which like was, Oh, oh my god, that was just like a huge blow to me. Like I could afford it, I worked it out, it's fine, but like when you're trying to work as an independent artist, doing your own stuff and like making minimum wage and you know, doing what you can to get by, like two thousand dollars like is more than what most Americans have saved up apparently. But it was yeah, it was a chunk of money and like that really depressed the shit out of me for a while. Usually around fall to pre Christmas, like my energy levels tend to be a little a little yucky. But usually in the new year, um, as things start fresh and wonderfully then I can get Usually that's when my, my energy starts to come back and I can start to, you know, start over and it's, you know, it's nice. So here's hope. So that's the life update portion of my video. If you stuck around this long, then I have some media recommendations for you guys. Just to let you know what I've been watching and listening to over the last couple months. It's just a short little list, but I'll run through some of the, some stuff that I def definitely, uh, I'll just run through some stuff that I definitely recommend and you guys can check them out whenever you want. Starting with Jessica Jones. Lead female character, superpowers, great clothes, super gay. What is not to recommend in this? Warning though, it has a lot of angst. There's a lot of angst happening. Jessica's got a very dark, soiled past filled with mistakes and manipulation, but definitely still very awesome. Um, I haven't finished it yet. I've only, admittedly, I've only watched like the first three episodes. So based on those three episodes, I give it an A minus. The first episode was like really good, the second one was okay, third one's still kind of okay, but I feel like it's gonna pick up. It's like giving me little tidbits of things that I want to see, and I'm excited. I'm excited. So the first movie that I've seen recently that I really enjoyed was Ex Machina. I watched this over the summer and I really, really enjoyed it. It's about the redheaded guy from Frank. Um, who works for like this future not Google company and he gets chosen to go out into the wilderness to meet the owner of this company and like 
do some experiments with this brand new tech that's coming out. And then it turns out that the brand new tech is artificial intelligence. As far as like boy and his robot girlfriend goes, this doesn't do a lot of new things in robot human relationships, but it does do some other things that I thought were very cool. Um, it's I would definitely describe this movie as a psychological thriller. Um, I was on the edge of my seat a couple of times. The cast is very limited to uh, to three or four people ish, depending on how you see the movie, and all of them do a stellar job. Everyone is really good in it, and I everyone carries the movie exceptionally well. Um, this movie also takes turns that I wasn't expecting when I started watching it, and I I really enjoyed it. I would give Ex Machina like an A minus. It, it doesn't necessarily do new things, but I was entertained and I, I really enjoyed it, you know? I think it's hard to do good robot-human relationships in film because they've been done so many times to death. A movie doesn't have to be, like, completely 100% unique and, like, completely altering and reinventing. And You can have a good film based on things that work. And then when they take those and they try to do something that is true to them and to their filmmaking style as well as their storytelling, um, then that, that to me is what makes it new and refreshing, is the lens in which we are seeing the story. And it's like really scary sometimes. Another show that I've been watching is Tengen Tapa Gurren Lagann. We finished this like a couple of months ago, but I just had to talk to you guys about it because I didn't see it when it was popular and watching it again, it was amazing. It was so much fun to watch. It's about these kids who live underground because the surface is covered in monsters and it's about their story as they escape and then thanks to the help of this girl named Yoko and then together they challenge the Spiral King for domain over the world and then eventually the galaxy until it's just, it is to a place that is insane. This show goes places that are so insane. It ramps up like no other show I've seen before. It like, it throws you into it and you just have to deal with it and you love I loved everyone. It's not without its problems, like every almost every girl wants to a communist dick and like Yoko is really only there for eye candy. They try at some point around the three quarter mark to give her like a little bit more character. Everyone kind of has like these like seeing into the eyes of God moment and like her moment for me was like mm, it wasn't super great. But regardless of that, this was this was super awesome. It really inspired me. I loved all the characters. I wanted to like fight and like be a better person and like make the world better just through sheer willpower which sounds ridiculous I guess but I really really enjoyed the series. I could honestly though I could only watch like two or three episodes at a time because this show is so overstimulating and so intense that I could only like I could only do it in small bites even though I loved it. I loved it. It's one of those things where like as soon as I know how much I enjoy it like I kind of like pull back a little bit and I slow down because I want to enjoy it over a period of time. I want to take the time to really absorb what it's saying to me and just love it. Love it. This show just made me want to like kick things and riot and like make everything better. And like I kind of wish that I had a better bot to cosplay the people in this because like everybody's showing a lot of skin a lot of the time because they kind of live in like a desert. But everyone, like I want to be Kamina. That's what I want. I want to be Kamina because he is so rad. He's rad. I mean, he's got like some views of women that are not great and like a lot of his low blows have to do with Yoko and her sexuality, which is lame. But I mean, like he's a man. I definitely give Gurren Lagann uh, an A. Definitely. Easy A. Yeah. The last thing I'm going to recommend to you guys today is What We Do in the Shadows. This movie was hilarious. It's from New Zealand and it's a, a mockumentary about vampires trying to live in modern day. They're just so cute because like it shows them like trying to do like everyday problems, like trying to go shopping or like at one point they try to get into a club but they can't because they need to be invited in by the bouncer and like the bouncer is not like he's just like whatever like you know what to do like do it and they're like no you need to you need to invite us in, in invite us into the club and the bouncer's like okay all right and it's like ah it's so cute for them and they're all from there's four of them and they're all from different parts of history like you've got Victor who is like 8,000 years old and you've got like the Satanist one who like tortures people 
and you've got a guy from like medieval times and then there's like a dandy one who's like i think if i had to pick a, like a lead character like a face character it would probably be the dandy um at one point they get like a new vampire type he's the youngest and he just gets turned like very recently and so he kind of has to learn how to deal with being a vampire and the realities of their society and their culture and that how like he never gets to like go out in the sun anymore. I hope <laughs> I'm going to sell to you guys a little bit. If you like laughing and you like making fun of vampires and you like documentary style things, then like this is definitely like I give this a solid A. Absolutely. I was tickled pink. I watched it in theaters and I did not regret it and I bought it on iTunes when it came out and watched it with my friends for Halloween because it was so, uh, it was so much fun. That's all I have to share with you guys today. Thanks so much for joining me and coming to hang out with me and listen to me rant about my life and crap that I watch. I hope things have been cool for you guys in the last two or three months since I've been here. Let me know how you've been doing in the comments. And if you've seen any or listened to any of the stuff that I recommended, you should also comment on those down below. Let me know what you think of them. So it's been cool, guys. I'll see you later.